corporate executives, countless of them from all over the world, coming here hoping to carve out a share of the biggest economic boom on the planet, the emerging middle class in China. Look at it this way. There are not just more households with TVs here than in America. There are 255 million more. More cars were sold here, 3 million more last year than in the United States. And as we have said, we came here with questions about what this means for America, for American jobs, and for the iconic American companies hoping to get their piece of the action in this culture so far away. It's China, so when Mary Kay Cosmetics, based in Texas, gathers a few of its salespeople for a pep talk, a few means 40,000 women in one giant hall. The total force, half a million Chinese in pink hats, pink Chevys for the top sellers. China now represents 20% of Mary Kay's business. The company spent 15 years in trial and error. The number one lesson learned? In China, the preference is pale. The Asians are very particular about uh, looking um, white. Um, Whereas I think uh, the, uh, in the United States, everybody wants to look tan. Lesson number two, don't drive that pink car up to a customer's home. It's okay for Dallas, but not in Beijing. In another city, another big American brand has spent 20 years working the country, and now McDonald's opens a new location every other day. Tim Fenton, president of international operations for this region, says American companies that want to succeed here need the three Ps. Patience persistence, and pockets, deep pockets. Deep pockets to create infrastructure and learn from mistakes. Tell me the biggest mistakes you made. I would say when we tried to launch a rice burger, they didn't buy it. People come to McDonald's for what we are. Um, they don't want to come to us for rice, so that was a learning we had. The biggest seller turns out to be a crunchy chicken sandwich, probably too spicy hot for most American tastes. An alternative to French fries, steamed corn in a cup. And instead of the apple pies we all eat, the Chinese like taro pie, which tastes like chopped potato <laughs> and a gooey sweet syrup. Wow. Wow. No comment. By the way, McDonald's only uses food grown by Chinese farmers. And the workers, also Chinese, 66,000 of them whose wages are much lower than in the U.S., but competitive for China. So the venture doesn't create so many American jobs, but if it works, McDonald's will deliver the Mount Everest of consumers to its American shareholders. And what about that great success story, General Motors, which has to comply with government rules? They sold a record two million cars here last year, but 95% of them entirely made in China with Chinese workers and profits shared with the Chinese government. GM told us most of their sales are from first-time buyers, a lot from the 700 million Chinese still living in poverty, who pooled their tiny savings to buy one car for the whole extended clan. And for the future, a new joint design, the almost laugh-out-loud prototype of a Jetson-style electric car. Room for two people, 25 miles per hour, anticipating the day decades from now when 60% of China will be working in cities and only need to drive to work an average of 5 to 10 miles. And even if the jobs are all Chinese, with 1.3 billion potential customers, who's going to walk away?